all good things have to come to an end, like Earth and humanity and also Atari Lynx Week. Boy, that was kind of a downer. Hey, cheer up! I mean, it's like, it's like a million years away from now. The end of the world. Lynx Week ends today. But it's going out with a bang, baby, because we got two Lynx reviews today. Not only that, we got two Lynx driving game reviews today. And one of them's freaking awesome. The other one is... This is the other one. It's quite possibly, seriously, the worst game I've ever played. It's hard driving for the Atari Lynx. Hardly driving. I'd rather have the apocalypse. Look, here's the thing, uh, it's like evolution, you know, a long time ago, some creature crawled out of the ocean because it got tired of swimming, and now, here we are, you know, and I'm sure that creature had no evil intent, no malice, but because of that creature, we have murderers today, there's a direct lineage, and it's not that it's even the primitive swimmy creature's fault, but also, it kind of is, it was a selfish decision. Shellfish. Shellfish decision. And that's like the situation we have here, with hard driving for the Atari Lynx. This game was originally an arcade game where it was kind of a big deal. You know, it was one of the first driving games to have 3D polygonal graphics. It, it was called the world's first authentic driving simulator. This one's only authentic if you're 90 years old and you drive a Winnebago to your local spaghetti dinner every Sunday afternoon. In which case, yes, this is very authentic. the arcade game, uh, but I understand it's very good, and that one actually was groundbreaking and important, but l I, listen, I, I was, I was, I don't know, I was five years old at the time, I don't know what you want from me, I was busy watching cartoons, I could, couldn't make it down to the arcade, sorry guys, but I did want to point out, the arcade game is apparently good, before I tell you about this one, which is apparently the seventh seal, either that or, you know, a nearly unplayable piece of interactive consumer electronics technology. One of the two. I mean, on the one hand, uh, it's impressive that there was a handheld video game doing these kind of 3D graphics in 1991. It's all very impressive. We're all very tickled. And in 1991, we were also very mind blown. Our minds were blown. But I can't imagine that playing it in 1991 was any different from playing it in 2015. Or I guess barely playing it in 2015, because this is barely playable. So let's just, let's get right into that gameplay. Uh, oh, holy crap, you guys. I, look, I don't think I've ever played a game with worse controls. Maybe as bad, but there's no way I've played anything worse than this. And if I have, I certainly don't remember it. It's crazy. It's like, it's like Gozer the Gozerian let me choose the form of the Destructor, and I thought about polygons. Couldn't help it, just popped in there. Which is fitting, because it's also like popped corn, this game. It just, it moves violently every few seconds, pop, pop, in this unpredictable manner. And then after it's done, your kitchen smells absolutely terrible. Also, if you breathe it in directly, it could literally kill you. That's hard driving for the Atari Lynx. Only no amount of synthetic butter can save you from this one. I mean, these controls, oh, like, I, oh, like, like, if you so much as just tap the D-pad, actually, fuck that, if you so much as breathe on the D-pad, it's like, your car doesn't even know what's happening, it just, it's like, a, a, automatically, it just goes up on two wheels and everyone starts dying instantly. It's almost impossible to actually keep your car on the track, and by track, I mean track, like one track, because there's, there's, there's one track in this entire goddamn game. And basically, you have a minute and a half to drive on it and go wherever you want and crash into other cars before game's over. You gotta leave now. So it's exactly like bumper cars, only this car makes the bumper car seem like a goddamn performance machine with German engineering. 
Oh, like this track's so magical and wonderful. Thanks for the 90 seconds on it. It's like you called up an escort service, but all she does is berate you verbally and then tell your wife. Look, I've, I've made like 15 analogies in this review, and I still haven't conveyed to you how awful it truly is. You know, look, the, the thing is, I guess the presentation, like if we were in 1991, would be pretty incredible for a handheld. We've and, and we've said that multiple times during Link's Week. But this is also one of those games that, like, that's the only highlight. It's just the tech behind it. And now that that tech's not as impressive and it's just actually kind of dated, all, all you have left is the game. And to be honest, there's not much of one. Like I said, 90 seconds. Hope you enjoy it! Boy, and guess what? You won't. Spoiler alert. You won't enjoy it. And no amount of polygons, or physics equations, or advanced graphics and sound techniques, or German engineering is going to make those 90 seconds anything better than the biggest mistake of your life. This is not only the worst driving game I've played on the Lynx, it's the worst game I've played on the Lynx. And maybe one of the worst games I've ever played. So I guess here we are at the end of Lynx week. And we're right back to where we started in the first place. With me, Derek from CGR Undertale, in abject misery. Yelling about things. But hey, look, that's that's life. That's that's hard driving for the Atari Lynx. No one said it was easy driving or fun driving. It's hard driving. Take a sharp left into that house driving. I hope you enjoyed Lynx Week.